Next, we'll go back to what is known as the bird's beak image of the supraspinatus tendon here. And again, I'll make sure I'm going to go forward again until I pick up that biceps tendon. I know that I'm in line with it, so as soon as I pull back a little more posteriorly, I should be in perfect alignment with the tendon. And there it is. That's a good alignment. And then what I'm going to do next is rotate the probe 90 degrees so that we see the tendon in short axis. In short axis, the tendon will appear as a tire on a wheel. The wheel represents the humeral head with the articular cartilage, and the tire is the supraspinatus tendon. As I said before, because the tendon is now running in a position that is something like this, we follow it proximally as far as we can, and at this point we are at a very proximal aspect of the tendon where we see the myotendinous junction, we see some interdigitation of muscle, will now move distally to the point where the tendon is joining the greater tuberosity. And here, we can actually see the shape of the greater tuberosity of the shoulder. Anteriorly in this region is the supraspinatus. A little bit of the supraspinatus here, this becomes the infraspinatus. And if I were to continue to move the probe posteriorly, the screen left being posterior, the screen right being anterior, will come to the teres minor, which is right in this region. Next, we're going to uh, look at the infraspinatus tendon, and that's easy enough to do because we'll just find the spine of the scapula and place the probe just underneath it. Now, the infraspinatus tendon tends to be a centrally located tendon, so if we follow it back in the, into the infraspinatus muscle, we'll see muscle on either side of it as a bipennate type muscle meeting up to the tendon. We can then follow the tendon laterally to where it inserts on the uh, posterior and middle facets of the greater tuberosity of the shoulder. In the same area, when we have the infraspinatus in view and slightly oblique the probe, we'll see the head of the humerus with the articular cartilage and the glenoid here, which is a little bright spot, is the bone of the glenoid. And just on top of that, that little bright area here represents his glenoid labrum. If I angled the probe down slightly or slid the probe a little more distally down his arm, we'll start to see the tendon here of the teres minor, which is more peripherally located in relationship to the muscle. Likewise, we can follow it out to where it inserts on the posterior facet of the greater tuberosity. These tendons can also be viewed in their short axis simply by rotating the probe. The infraspinatus now will be superior. And first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to where you can see the spine of the scapula. So you realize that that being the spine of the scapula, if we drop down just below it, the infraspinatus will be the first structure that we see underneath that in this region. This is all deltoid here. This is infraspinatus. And then deep or below that, down a little further in this region, is the teres minor. So teres minor, infraspinatus, infraspinatus tendon, and there's the spine of the scapula again as I went a little more proximally. When we're in the position looking at the posterior glenohumeral joint and we see again the infraspinatus, we should always slide medially to this region because right here is the spinoglenoid notch where we frequently will find paralabral cysts.